predictable what today's lesson was going to be. We did arithmetic sequence. We did geometric sequence. Then we did arithmetic series, geometric series. So some of this won't be a surprise. There's one, there's one big surprise. One really clever thing that's got to happen. But the first part of the note is the same as yesterday. A geometric series is the sum of the terms of a geometric sequence. And this time yesterday, it probably seemed impossible that we could find sums very quickly. You know, adding up 1 to 100. It just seemed like it would take forever. But we've now seen a very clever, yet simple, way to handle that situation. And we've got a nice formula for arithmetic. So maybe you're not as mystified at this point in the lesson going, okay, he's got some other trick up his sleeve to do geometric ones. And it's very similar to yesterday's, actually. Here you go, sir. Recall Tn, oh, uh, <coughs> Tn for arithmetic, sorry, for geometric sequences, AR, n minus 1. That's important. Without that formula, good luck. Good luck. And Sn, if we want to add up the terms, we'd go term 1 plus term 2 plus term 3 all the way up to the last term. So we are adding all those terms this time. So I wanted you to see that separately so it's like clear that we're doing adding up these. So as we did with arithmetic, arithmetic series, first I'll do it with numbers. Yesterday with Gauss, I did 1 to 100. I said, hey, couldn't we do this? And all I did was flip the series around, add them together, and, and beautiful stuff happened really quick. This one's similar, similar idea. Find the sum of this series. So let's do it without a formula. Let's do it as if this is not what happened, but I'll make up a story. So the next day, Gauss's teacher showed up and said, oh yeah? Hmm. Try this one. 3 plus 6 plus 12 plus 24 plus 28. Gauss's trick doesn't work very well for geometric sequences. So Gauss looked at it a long time. Now when you write this, what I'm going to write, you've got to leave a space because I'm going to write something above it, okay? So the space I'm going to leave here is on purpose. He said, okay, well, the sum of these terms is 3 plus 6 plus 12 plus 24 plus 48 plus dot, 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 plus 1536. A lot like he did yesterday. He just made that list out, and he notices that flipping it around doesn't help. So he looked and looked and looked. And then he went like this. Ah. If I multiply that series by 2, and we got to talk about where he came up with the number 2, which we will. Before I'm done, it, I will demystify how he came up with the number 2. He noticed that if he multiplied the whole series by 2, he got this. The first term, 3 times 2 was 6. He lined that right up. Over top of that, 6. Multiplies the next term by 2. 6 times 2 was 12. The next term was 24. See, he's lined them all up by multiplying the whole series by 2. So he does get, later on, he does get the 1536. But then he gets an extra one. When he multiplies 1536 by 2, he gets 3072. And that's a little extraneous, but they all lined up nicely. Preparing you for the brilliance that's got to happen. Yesterday, adding those two series worked very well. This time, adding's not going to help that much. What could help, though? Multiplying. Multiplying those individual terms, I'll get 36, 144, 576. Doesn't really simplify them. Division, I'll get one. Uh, 
it's all addition so they won't cancel. I can't cancel division with addition. What does cancel with addition? Subtraction, watch this, this is great. I, it might be better than yesterday's actually. But you gotta see yesterday's to see today's. 2s minus s. S. Oh, let me write this, subtract. So whatever I get here will be the answer. Zero minus three, I get a negative three. Six minus six? 12 minus 12? 24 minus 24? They all go, except this last one. 3072. So I'll write those in there, just so you can see. I, the, I'm not ignoring them. I'm just noticing that all these ones in between are all zero, except the first one and the last one. Wow. He's done. He might be better than yesterday. It's not as simple as yesterday. That's the only problem with it. You got to know to multiply the second, the series by the magic number. And I'm going to explain it later, but does anyone know what the magic, why it was two? It's the common ratio. Just multiply it by the common ratio and they'll all line up and subtract nicely. Beautiful. Beautiful. We won't do it that way. We could. Well, I've got a formula that encapsulate that nicely. There, less than over. Yeah, pretty nice. Oh, I've got to make the formula. And those of you who have been keeping up with the homework might be like, just give me the formula. I'm really good with the formula. As long as you give me the formula, I can go home. Thank you very much. I'm about to do that. That's exactly what I'll do next. Here's how you do it with a formula. So if the numbers are weird, that was fine if the numbers are nice, but if the numbers are weird and the R's weird or the A's weird, as soon as things get weird, we want a, a formula. So here's the way to build the formula. Take the sum of the terms, which is A, oh, let's just talk about that for a second. Let's go over here and just a little thought bubble to talk about what these terms are. The first term is A. The second term, we take that thing and multiply it by the common ratio. So the second term is AR, A times R. The third term is A times R times R again, which is AR squared. That's where they're getting this list from. The sum of the terms is A plus AR plus AR squared plus AR cubed all the way up to the last term, which is that ARN minus one. If I go above that and multiply the whole thing by R, then I get AR, AR squared, AR cubed. See, they all start lining up just like we want them to line up. And now I'm one step away from the formula. What do I got to do here? To make these all cancel? Subtract. subtract, because they're all adding. To make them cancel, I'm going to have to subtract. And over here, I get RSN minus SN. Not quite as tidy as the other one. We're going to need a little work here, but it plays out not too bad. So I'm going to do a little tidying here. Oh. SN in both terms. Only there was a way to pull it out when it's in both terms. Like, see, that SN is common. Common. Yeah, th that's exactly right. Common factor this thing out. Say, okay, I'm going to common factor out SN, and then I'm left with R minus 1 in the brackets. Over here, I'm not doing anything. Don't get too excited. I didn't do anything except change the order of the terms. I put the subtraction term second. Then I can get SN. I just take what's on the right and divide it by that common factor on the left. But I am going to common factor in the numerator as well. I think you'll find that a little easier to work with, with that A common factored out. Is that on the test? No. No developments in grade 11. You know no times you have to do this. Here's the big game though. In advanced functions, there is a couple of proofs. So I show you a few proofs in 11U, so you can look at them and go, hmm, mm hmm, I sort of kind of 37% get it. I kind of follow what's happening here. And then in advanced functions, we can get into it and start doing a couple. There's like a couple all semester. So it's not, don't get too scared. But do you have any questions about that?
scary thing? Uh, yeah. Yeah, question. Um, I, I, I think this was all, this was definitely already told, but like, the how we find the amount of turns. Oh, that's a good question. Let me just make sure that there's one of those in the examples, because I want to show that again. Yeah. Example three set, goes back and goes, what if you don't know the number of terms? And I'll show you in example three how to do that. Okay? Let's just pretend right now that what's going to happen is they're going to tell you the N, they're going to tell you the A, and they're going to tell you the R, and you or, sorry, they're not going to tell you. You look at a series, and from it you can figure out the N, the A, and the R, and just plug those in. Let's just pretend that's true until we run into trouble in example three. Okay? So here's example two, which I'll call, oh, no, that, that's as good as we can do. History's told us that's as good as we can do. That's as nice. It's not quite as nice as some of the other formulas, but it's not bad. Nathan, question. Um, would R be equal to theta? Would it be the common ratio? Still the common ratio. Yes, good. So again, for people who have kept up and are used to plugging in A's and R's and N's, you're like, thanks. See ya. I'm going. See you tomorrow. Yeah, like, it's just another formula. Because in this course, you're not responsible to make the formula. If I was in charge of the curriculum, would I make you make the formula? I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's, it's everything. Making the formulas is everything. It makes it so this isn't some mystery. Mr. Todd just says that's a formula. It's like you, you get where it comes from. Maybe I'd make it a bonus mark. That's what I do. You know, you flip over to your test on the last page. It's like, can you make the formula? Yeah. But we don't. Example two, find the sum of the first 10 terms. This is the one Kyle was worried about. He said, what if we don't know the number of terms, but this one gives the number of terms. So our job is, what kind of series is it? It's geometric. Can you tell that by looking at them now? You look at it and go, okay, well, it's not, a, it's not arithmetic. Yeah, and so then he went, okay, my R, take 15, divide it by negative 3. I don't suspect that's what he did. You just looked at it and knew what it was, did you? Yeah, so it depends. If you're really good at these multiples, then you just go, oh, it's negative 5. If not, take the second term and divide it by the first term, and you get your R. Your N is right there, and A is supposed to be easy. That's supposed to be the easy part of these questions, because A is just the first term in the series. Then you write down the formula. SN equals A. Ooh, yours is with an RN first, isn't it? Yes. I almost wrote the one first. There's another way to write this formula. I almost wrote the wrong there. And I just sub them in. I just go, okay, sum of 10 terms equals A, which was negative 3, times R to the N, which is negative 5 to the 10. Ooh. That scares me. Am I going to be able to do that in my head? I don't know. We'll find out in a second. If not, Nathan's probably ready on the calculator. Let me just stare at that for a second to make sure I plug it in right. Because once I got distracted yesterday, right, didn't, didn't plug him in right. A, negative 3, yes. R, negative 5, yes. N is 10, yes. Negative 1, yes. Negative 5 minus 1. OK, let's see what I can do here. Good luck, Mr. Todd. Good luck, Mr. Todd. Yeah. Negative 3, negative 5 to the 10. Oh, I don't know if that's, if I have any chance at all. It's going to be even. 5, 25, 125, 625, 31, 15,625, 7. Nope. 5 to the power of 5. Do it. Uh, I'm only up to three, six, seven. I gotta go three more. That was a crazy noise. That was a crazy noise. What was the noise? I don't know. Total uh, and utter frustration. Yeah? Why do I do that? No, it's not to stay young. I'm lying. I got other things. Stay young. 
I do it because the more you challenge yourself to try a few of these, the more numbers you get in your head, and the more ready you are for other things. So if you can do, maybe you can do to 625, maybe you can now do 625 in your head. It just gives you more power, more versatility when questions come up to be able to answer things. I'm just trying to keep myself versatile. Yeah. Your calculator handles this whole thing, doesn't it? What do you get, Nathan? Um, you didn't type it in? I do have it. 976 5626. 5626. I'm going to type it in as well just to make sure we don't leave a mistake in this thing. And you try it out in your calculator because this is no joke being able to type these in in your calculator. Is it 25? I'll try it. You try it. Don't wait around to tonight to figure out you don't know how to type these into your calculator. Negative 5, exponent 10, subtract 1 over negative 5 minus 1. Uh, that's not what I get at all. That's not close to what I get. I get 488, 2812. Yeah. Oh, we were just the oh, you were just doing the negative 5 to the 10th. Yeah. Okay, good. And if you need to do it in steps because it's too much for you to type in, great. You just have to find your own way to do it. I typed in the whole thing. So finish it off, and then I need at least one person to agree with me so that we feel good. Ben agrees. Yeah? So the sum of the first 10 terms is, whoa, 4,882,812. That would have kept Gauss going all week if he had to do it by hand, just keep adding terms together, even though there's only 10 terms. To get to 4,882,812, wow. Do you have questions about that? Hopefully many of you are just like, okay, so I just, Sub into this formula now? And the answer is yes. Where it's an exercise in learning to sub into formulas. One more? More time? Last one? Find the sum of the series 64 plus 32 plus 16 plus blah, 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 plus 1 over 256. What kind of series is it? I know, it's the geometric series lesson, so you're like, it must be geometric. But you don't really know, you gotta check. Yeah? So you go, okay, 32 divided by 64 is 1 half. 16 divided by 32 is 1 half. Can I use 0 0.5? Yes. But, y yes. But use the fraction. You'll actually find it easier, I think. Anyways, the R is 1 half. The A is 64. But what term is 1 over 256? Now we rewind to geometric sequence. Homework. Geometric sequence homework forced you to try and find out what term number is that. So you write down this, Tn equals a r n minus 1. And you sub in. a equals 64 r equals one half and tn equal to one over 256. So if you haven't done enough of that homework, that's all you do to find the number of terms. Sub in the term and then you can solve for the n. Now I don't know how easy it is to solve for n this time. I think it's a little bit difficult actually. One over 256 equals 64 times one half to the n minus 1, which is disastrous. What a mess. What a mess. My, 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 my. Solving for exponents is a major league problem. For reals. Unless you have logs. Have you heard that word before? I mentioned it the other day. So, it's our fault, sorry. We should do logs in this course. We really should. We're just out of time, right? It's January. 
11th, 12th, 12th, January 12th, we're out of time. Well, we really should do logs right now. And logs will solve this pretty easily. So we're stuck with trial and error. We're stuck with going, huh, what's going to work here, okay? Now, what I would suggest is isolating, but you don't have to. That is, I would suggest doing something like this. Go 1 over 256, divide by the 64. That definitely will still be true when you learn logs. When you do learn logs, you will still do this step. You'll divide those two things, and when you divide those two things, you get 1 over 256 times 1 over 64 equals 1 over 2 to the n minus 1. Do I have a little more space available? Yes, I do. That's what division is, multiplying by the reciprocal. So when I go 256 times 64, Yes, okay. Now I'm going to pretend like logs will just like bang, solve that. And there's a little bit more to that than that. But basically next year when we learn logs, we'll be like, yeah, no problem. We'll just bang, we'll do something there and we'll get the answer. We're stuck with going, okay, 16384 as a power of two, we're stuck with this ridiculous procedure, which is 2 to the power of 5 in my calculator. Oh, that's 32. 2 to the power of 5 is not big enough. 2 to the power of 6, 64. Uh, it's a lot bigger than that. You ever see the show Price is Right? You just higher, lower. You just play around like this. And while you're doing it, you're like, this is stupid. This is insane. And you're right, because we haven't taught you logs yet. Yeah, so, uh, so this is a little bit of torture here until you learn logs. And I play around. You play around your calculator until you get it. 2 to the power of 4. Is it 14? This is 1 over 2 to the 14. Just me playing around till I got it. Then I can go, oh, that means n minus 1 is 14. That means n is 15. Do you have to do my steps there to try on error? No, no, there's lots of ways to handle it. You've got to play around until you got it. And while you're doing it, I encourage you to be annoyed. Be like, what are we doing here? Please tell me you've got something better than just trial and error until I get the answer. And the answer is, oh boy, do we? But it's going to take a whole chapter to learn logs. The grade 12s are learning it right now. I just saw Mr. Jesdorski get the photocopier, and he was photocopying log stuff for them. So they're learning about logs right now. When you take chemistry, she'll be forced to teach you this much logs just to get through the lessons. Say, just press log. It's, it's right built into chemistry logs. So when you see it's like this, Somehow the lessons are just out of order here. The logs should have been in grade 11, and then in chemistry we could have used it, and then we wouldn't have to learn it in advanced functions, but we're just 11 used too big of a course as it is. Now I can go over here and go Sn equals A R to the N minus 1 over R minus 1. I now have everything I need. I'm summing up 15 terms. The A is 64. The R is 1 half to the 15 minus 1 over 15 minus 1. And if you need several steps to do that, great. I encourage you to try and get good with your calculator where you can just type that whole thing in in one step. Somebody else should try it at the same time just to make sure we agree. 64 bracket, another bracket with a fraction of 1 half in it. Close the bracket, exponent 15 minus 1. Close that bracket over 15 minus 1. I get Look at this monstrosity. Scaring you badly that you've typed it in wrong, because how could that be the answer? Mm. Can it be the answer? Let's go back and look at this series we're talking about. No, it's got to be positive. Did I type it in wrong? Say it again. Oh, I did that yesterday. Did I do that exact same thing yesterday? Jeez. The good news is to fix what's on my screen takes only a moment.
and this time when I type it in, Brig, I get still a crazy decimal. That's not surprising that it's a crazy decimal, but it should have been a positive number. Why is it a crazy decimal? Well, a whole bunch of fractions appear here, right? 16, 8, 4, 2, 1, 1 half, 1 quarter, 1 eighth, 1 sixteenth, 1 32. There's a whole bunch of crazy fractions getting added. So when you're doing yours, and it's a whole bunch of crazy fractions, and your calculator taps out and goes, I don't even know what fraction anymore. It's just a decimal. It's the best I can do. Don't be surprised by that with questions with a lot of fractions in it. If the numbers were all whole numbers, then this shouldn't happen. Do you have any questions about that? Did someone else type this in and get the same answer? Yeah. 